Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to day three of VEDA. If you want to know more about VEDA before you watch this video, I will link my playlist of the two previous videos up above. check those out in order and come back and see me. Today we are doing self-destructing books round three I think. Uh, so far every self-destructing book that I have read has been unhauled or that I've put on this video has been unhauled without reading. If you don't know what self-destructing books are, it is this video concept that I am 90% sure Becca from Becca and the Books created herself where she picks 10 to 14 books that she owns but is not sure she wants to read any. And then, basically, you have one year from the day this video comes out and to read it. If you don't read it, or if I don't read it in a year, when we come back and visit this uh, video, I have to unhaul them unread. So far, we had one last April or like April 2020, uh, where I didn't read any of them. I unhauled them all without reading them. Then I made another self-destructing video in January of 2021, and I have since unhauled all those without reading them too. So these ones, I feel like have the most potential to be read because I don't think that they're bad books. I honestly don't think there is really such a thing as bad books. I just think that different books resonate with different readers because how boring would it be if we all liked the same books? There would be no platform like booktube if we all had the same opinion about everything we read. I have gathered 12 books that if I don't read them by this time next year, so August of next year, they will be on halt. Let's start with book number one, which is uh, a mass market paperback, which I don't like to begin with. This is Jurassic Park by Michael Creighton. Everyone knows what Jurassic Park is, right? I mean, they made a remake of Jurassic Park, called it Jurassic World. That's the remake. There's also the original, it's dinosaurs? I'm pretty sure everyone knows. Um, so I enjoyed the original Jurassic Park. And I enjoyed the remake with Chris Pratt better. But uh, I found the book and I was like, you know, I would like to know where it came from. So hence buying the book. But I have since heard that this is more scientific than uh, the movies were and that it's just very very dense and sciencey. Sciencey is not a word but I'm creating it here right now so we're going with it. Um, so if I don't read this by next year at this time I'm just gonna continue to have my memories of Jurassic Park and Jurassic World be those of the movies and just 
give up on reading it. Sorry, I had to fix the lighting situation. I think it's a lot better now. But I was talking <laughs> about how a thousand beginnings and endings. Yes, that is perfect. Uh, edited by Ellen O. This is 16 retellings of Asian myths and legends. I was so excited to read this. Uh, because I saw Kayla from Books and La La reading this, and uh, I've come to the conclusion that I don't like short story collections, and that's okay. I'm allowed not to. Uh, I've tried to read this like six or seven times, and I never even finish the first short story. The first story is only 15 pages. And I can't even finish 15 pages. Okay, then I got this solely as an author by. Didn't even look to see what it was about. So I read P.S. I Love You by Cecilia Ahern last year because one of you great people, one of my subscribers, recommended it to me so it sat on my shelf for a very long time and then I read it and I loved it and I like fell in love so I at the time thought that I would read anything Cecilia Ahern wrote because her writing in P.S. I Love You is so beautiful and tender and I wanted all of her books so I started buying her backlist how is it possible to know someone you've never met with her marriage already in pieces Joyce nearly loses everything else but she survived the terrible accident that left her hospitalized and now she can remember faces she has never seen I have changed my mind about a whole genre of books before I go on my little tangent I want to say that I think all books have value they just need to find the right reader and for this sub genre of a genre I'm just done they don't do anything for me so, I'm talking about YA romance. With that being said, <laughs> uh, uh, I have four YA romances that are on the self-destructing list that if I don't read them in a year, they are going to be unhauled. The first one is Waiting for You by Suzanne Polistini. The Season of You and Me by Robin Constantine. Okay, and then there's 10 Things We Did and Probably Shouldn't Have by Sarah Mounowski, which is Interference by Kay Honeyman. Oh, I guess that five of my 12 books were YA romance. This is Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. Then I have The Nanny Diaries by Emma McLaughlin and Nicola Cross. I love this movie. It's so cute. And that's kind of why I picked this up. But I never want to read this. I don't think I'm ever going to care enough to read it. Yeah, it's a very cute, fun movie, especially if you just kind of want to tune out the world for, for an hour and a half, and you're just kind of like, eh, yeah. It's not my favorite movie, but it's cute. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to care to read it, though. This mammoth of a book, 
I didn't even mean to buy. So this is the Goldfinch by Donna Tart. I thought this book was The Secret History by Donna Tart. This one is character driven, which is not my thing. This one follows this character whose mom has committed suicide and you just kind of follow him throughout his life. It sounds very boring, very character driven, maybe a little hard hitting, but honestly I just don't care and it's way too long. And then these two are the most likely to get read if I read any of the books on this list. I'm predicting it will be one of these, if not both. Uh, so, these are both sci-fi, and that's why they're on this list, but they intrigue me in one way or another. So, let's start with Legend by Marie Lu. This is a fast-paced sci-fi thriller? It's young adult. So I'm not, like, not reading any more young adult. I just don't think YA romance is for me anymore. From different worlds, June and Day have no reason to cross, cross paths until June's brother is murdered and Day becomes the prime suspect. In the shocking turn of events, the two uncover what has really brought them together and the sinister lengths to which their country will go to keep its secrets. It's also very political, which is something that I'm not intrigued by. Uh, but it's like political sci-fi. Then I have Stice by Neil Schusterman. I watch a lot of fantasy sci-fi booktubers, but I don't read fantasy sci-fi very often. Um, so this is another like sci-fi, I think. Well, first off, look. Arc. Arc. Arc, arc, arc. Advanced Reader's Copy of Stythe Book 1. That is cool. I didn't even realize it was an arc until after I got it home. But this is like a utopian, which is really just a fancy word for dystopian because utopia doesn't exist, nor could it ever. But then if you're thinking like that, dystopians only exist in books. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess that's debatable. Some could say that we're living in a dystopian right now. Anyways, we're getting completely off topic. So let's talk about this book. So this is a utopia. A world with no hunger, no disease, no war, no misery. Humanity has conquered all those things. Woo! And now we've even conquered death. But then there are Stites who basically control the world and they pick who lives and who dies. In order to have this utopia, you have to punish people for doing wrong things. like. I really don't know if there's like speeding in a car and then they just kill you but it could be like that potentially or if you're hungry and there's a starving family over there and you take the food that could go to them maybe they'll strike you down I don't know I honestly have no idea oh um, but maybe things aren't as good as everyone says. So this is my last book on my These Books Will Self-Destruct video. 
hopefully I will read at least one of them or else this video is very anticlimactic, kind of like the other two rounds of this game have or this video have been. <gasps> Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. In August, I'm doing a video every single day, so you don't want to miss it. Please subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss a single video from me.